Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today we have some pretty big news. Both Microsoft and Nvidia have announced their new ray tracing technologies that will be coming to consumer gaming graphics here in the near future. So let's go ahead and check out Tech Power Up's article. There seems to be a little bit more detailed. As per usual, links are in the description below if you wanna read the entire article for yourself, but we're gonna go ahead and check out some of the key points. All right, so this bit's pretty important. Microsoft today announced an extension to its DirectX 12 API with a DirectX ray tracing. So this is important because this is a part of DirectX 12. It's just an extension, obviously a very important one, but it's still part of DirectX 12. That was one of the questions that I had when this leaked on Friday. The company has hence collaborated with Microsoft, they're referring to Nvidia there, to develop the Nvidia RTX technology. DirectX Ray Tracing, DXR, API, along with a few turnkey effects, which will be made available through the company's next generation Gameworks SDK. Under Gameworks Ray Tracing as Ray Tracing Denoiser Module for the API. Now here they go on to say Ray Tracing's basically been the holy grail for gaming for a long time. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Ray Tracing, I uh, just want to kind of briefly go into this. This is basically the way that, like, Pixar movies and your CGI for movies have been developed for a very long time, which this is from Remedy's Northlight engine, which they used in uh, Quantum Break. And that game had a lot of very unique techniques to it, but it looks like they're incorporating the ray tracing. And as you can see in this little teaser video here that just was uploaded to YouTube a few hours ago, so I do apologize the qualities not quite as good as, uh, you know, if it was running natively on my PC, but you can see the effects on the table from the gloss. Everything is reacting properly and more naturally than it would in real life. So that's really the main effect of the ray tracing is to give a more realistic representation of the way that light and shadows and camera focus and things like that work in reality. So back to the article, according to NVIDIA, RTX provides speed ups of several hundred percent, i.e. two or three times faster over the default DXR compute shader path. So that means the NVIDIA specific features, and we'll go into some of the specific hardware required for that here in just a second, will be much faster. That's probably the reason why Microsoft has teamed up with NVIDIA to start showcasing this. NVIDIA RTX has two components, specialized hardware on Volta GPU and the NVIDIA Gameworks ray tracing effects. So the big thing here is that this is confirmed that these effects are really only available on Volta and newer. That means Pascal and beyond, or previously, this won't work on. This also will not work on current AMD graphics cards either. At least the highly accelerated bit that we were just talking about this two or three times faster. So even though that they may work on the older GPUs, they're going to be infinitely slower than what Volta can do. And throughout this entire article, Volta is pretty much relied on as basically the cornerstone to the reason why this is even coming into the PC gaming space. And this is probably the reason why RTX takes advantage of the tensor cores on the Volta GPUs. Now remember, RTX is not DXR. I know this is getting confusing. DXR is basically DirectX 12 with the ray tracing uh, bit added into it. So that's with the addition of the ray tracing on DX12. Now RTX is basically Nvidia's game works that also takes advantage of DXR. So this is kind of like an add-on to an add-on. I know that's a little bit confusing, uh, took me a little while to kind of sort that out in my own head. But remember that these are two separate things that just happen to work together. Now, NVIDIA's RTX is what takes advantage of the Volta GPUs and the tensor cores. So DXR naturally does not. These are specialized components NVIDIA originally designed to accelerate AI, which we know. The company's optics denoiser leverages AI, so we're sure that RTX relies on AI to get real-time ray tracing accurate. So AI is actually a key feature in this, and that's the reason why they're able to actually produce this, and this is the reason why Volta is really necessary to accelerate uh, basically graphics to this point. 
They go over a couple of the key features here. Uh, in GameWorks, they call them turnkey. Turnkey means that they're just ready to work. You just drop them in and they work. Uh, area shadows, glossy reflections, ambient occlusion, the ray traced version. Um, this is going to be put into, or it's already signed on to be put into, Epic Games' is Unreal Engine, Unity Engine, Frostbite Engine, Algorithmic uh, have expressed interest in NVIDIA RTX, along with developers from EA's various studios, Remedy Entertainment, and A4 Games. So we have a pretty good sizable list of people that are pretty interested in this technology. But remember, this is RTX, not DXR. I know, this is already getting confusing. But that means they're very interested in GameWorks, essentially. GameWorks 2.0 is kind of the easiest way to think about it. Now, this is from NVIDIA's press. Uh, NVIDIA today announced NVIDIA RTX, a, a ray tracing technology that brings real-time cinematic quality rendering to content creators and game developers. NVIDIA RTX is the product of 10 years of work in the computer graphics algorithms and uh, GPU architectures. So clearly they've been working on this for a long time, and we've heard ray tracing for years and years now, and it looks like we're finally starting to get somewhere. It consists of highly scalable ray tracing technology running on NVIDIA Volta architecture and GPUs, architected to support ray tracing through a variety of interfaces. NVIDIA partnered closely with Microsoft to enable full RTX support for applications that use Microsoft's new DirectX ray tracing API. So once again, you need DXR, and then the game works is on top of it. And it's spelled out right here, NVIDIA's RTX requires Volta or later GPUs. Now there's a misspelling here, but this technology won't work on older architectures, not even Pascal. Well, already guys, that's just the biggest bits of information in there. There's tons of information. There's good stuff in that whole article. I suggest reading it in the description below. Uh, click the link. Tech Power Up, this is a great write-up that they did here. I checked a couple other websites. I like this one the best. That's why I decided to go with it. It seems to be the most complete, even though they do go over the same information a few times. Uh, it seems like that they took several different press releases, and they just give you all the information, so you can check it out for yourself. Now, yesterday's stream didn't go according to plan. It didn't come out very good, but we did talk about this a little bit, and I'm just going to kind of go over it again if you guys missed the live stream. Uh, this is a big deal. This is a very big deal. Ray tracing, like I said, and they said, it's pretty much the holy grail. This is what everybody's been chasing for years now. Everybody wants to get to that Pixar quality level of graphics, and we can get kind of close. There's some articles out there saying, you know, like Crisis and The Order 1866, that's what TechSpot was referencing. They get very close and they look great, but they have to use a lot of cheats for it. It's not natural and realistic because everything's either pre-calculated or just baked in. It's not actually figuring out all of these possible configurations for the lighting in real time. Now, that's where the tensor cores seem to really come into play. They're going to use an AI algorithm to calculate exactly how this is supposed to work and look, and it will make it look more realistic. The very interesting point about that is, is we all believe the next GPUs, consumer-grade GPUs, would not be Volta because of the tensor cores, because there was no reason for them to be on a consumer-grade graphics card until right now. We've gotten the answer. So, obviously, tensor cores are going to be important moving forward, which means that the GPUs... Uh, that NVIDIA is producing are going to be something kind of completely different because it's going to be a hybrid between a standard GPU graphics processing unit that we're well aware of and an AI card to run video games. So we're taking gaming and graphics to a whole new level here. And yesterday I kind of tied that in with the GPP program. Uh, as you guys know, I did a bunch of videos on that and it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. NVIDIA may want to separate their brand. That might be the reason why they went ahead and did that, because obviously they had more information. They knew that they were going to do this. We didn't know that they were going to do this. Uh, before Friday, I had no idea that this announcement was coming. So with that in mind, maybe they're trying to separate GPUs from what they're trying to build here, their RTX. Uh, what might be really interesting is they may change it from GeForce GTX to GeForce RTX, that might be really kind of uh, a different thing too. So maybe that was the reason why they wanted their brand to be kind of separate because 
the Volta GPUs with the tensor cores are technically doing more than what a standard GPU does. And I think maybe they just didn't want to be lumped into that same category. So I'm not really defending the GPP program here. I'm just throwing out there that this might be the reason why they're doing it. Remember, that was the question a lot of us had a hard time wrapping our heads around. We're like, you guys have the industry dominance. Why would you do this? Why would you try to sully your name and just make things harder on yourself uh, in the press? But if they're coming out with a new, basically a brand new product, it's not really a GPU in the traditional sense. They'll probably come up with a new acronym for it. So they probably want to brand their products separately and make them stand out and even against their older products. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Guys, you know I'm pretty hard on NVIDIA, and I was giving them a lot of crap when we were hearing that Turing or Ampere were basically just going to be uh, Pascal refreshes, which are Maxwell refreshes. I was wrong. I'm going to flat out admit it. I was wrong. NVIDIA behind the scenes were developing a brand new way to game, and they're really pushing the industry forward here. This really says a lot about the company, and I will flat out 100% say I did not expect this. And I do apologize for giving them so much grief off of rumors because that was the track record that we had been seeing, but this is amazing. I know a lot of people are going to be a little leery of the NVIDIA RTX basically being incorporated with Gameworks and that a lot of these uh, big publishers out there and game engines are starting to take advantage of that. But if you really think about it, this is really the only option. I mean, if your only real option is to use a Volta GPU and to use uh, DXR and the RTX, NVIDIA's RTX Gameworks, to get ray tracing into your games, would you not want to take advantage of that? Would you want to allow your com competitors to have these features in their games and you not take advantage of it? Of course not. NVIDIA has just proven that they're not only the performance leader in PC graphics and graphics in general, they are now the industry leader in innovation and pushing things forward. Now, granted, we haven't seen too much. The demo that I played earlier, which I'll go ahead and play again here, uh, this does show some really cool stuff, and it's just a tech demo. But this is a really interesting start to a new level of graphical fidelity that we just currently don't have. Now, moving forward, what I find interesting, and this is just me kind of just talking, um, I find it interesting that Microsoft and NVIDIA are working so closely on this. This kind of leads me to think that perhaps in the future, the next Xbox may also want to take advantage of this. Now, I'm not saying that it will or it won't, but uh, it seems likely with the collaboration, the two companies working very closely together and Microsoft wanting to recapture the console market, this may be a way for them to kind of lock that down if they can get some sort of ray tracing into the Xbox 2 and then maybe pay for some sort of exclusivity of it and lock out Sony, maybe. Uh, I mean, we talk a lot about companies out there doing business that's a little shady and maybe that's, uh, maybe that's on the horizon. I just wanted to throw that out there. I think it'd be kind of interesting. Uh, to see which way Microsoft goes with the next Xbox, especially since they're promoting this technology on their platform and they're working closely with NVIDIA on this. To me, it would make sense for them to want to at least explore this in a future uh, console of theirs, even though that would mean they would have to have separate CPU and GPU again, and that's a little bit harder to design. They're a little bit bigger, but with the graphical fidelity increases, I don't know why they wouldn't want to take advantage of that. Me personally, I'm very excited to see how this shapes out. It's probably not going to be fully implemented in games for a while, but I would expect that at this E3, probably Cyberpunk 2077 will likely show off some of these features. I think that will probably be the poster child for this technology, at least in the immediate future. So, I mean, if you look at the little teaser trailer that they put out, me personally, I thought it was just some sort of CGI movie, but if they are taking advantage of ray tracing, that might actually be the reason why it looks so good, is because it's using technology that we just don't have access to yet. The downside to this is, if you were currently in the market looking for a GPU, I would not buy anything right now. Nothing high-end anyway, uh, especially with the newer GPUs coming out, hopefully sometime towards the end of this year it seems like q3 is probably likely especially with it being volta they're going to uh 
I would actually think that Nvidia would want to wait till seven nanometers. So this way it'd become a little bit more cost effective. That's the reason why I think the Titan V uh, it costs so much is because it's on the 12 nanometer. It's so big. It costs a lot to produce. And well, let's face it, they can charge whatever they want for it because there's really no competition. But they need to find a way to make that more budget friendly. So this way they could put them into GeForce cards, especially with the tensor cores attached. That's, that's something I really wasn't expecting. And uh, I find it super interesting where we're going. I'm really happy to say that it looks like graphics and gaming is starting a next generation. Like we're going to get a true next generation here moving forward. At this point, I don't really know uh, if AMD has an answer for this. They might be working on something. We have no idea. Hopefully that they do, uh, because it looks like NVIDIA is going to take a massive lead. Something akin to the GTX 8000 series. Uh, even though that was mostly just a performance lead, that wasn't really a new technology lead. But I'm thinking we're going to be seeing that sort of level of difference between graphics cards here uh, if, if this comes out. Now, it may be a trade-off between frame rate and graphical fidelity. We don't really know. There's all kinds of stuff that we can talk about. This is just the first video. I wanted to get this information out to you guys as quick as we can. We'll discuss this further. This is really good stuff. I love when we see technology moving forward and things actually progressing. We haven't seen graphics technology really advance since the original crisis. Uh, if you think about it, there's really no games that make that game look bad at this point. And that game is 11 years old now. Well, alrighty guys, that'll do it for today. If you like this kind of video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. Definitely share this one with friends. This is good news for everybody. Uh, with the industry moving forward, that's great. Let's go ahead and share that with as many people as we can. And hopefully that'll brighten the day to a lot of people that are looking at the current PC market and going, man, everything's bad and drab. Things are going to get better and really exciting here in the near future. So this is great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say on this. And I went ahead and started uh, my own Discord server. So if you guys wanted to go ahead and jump in there, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on that. So this way I can keep in touch with you all uh, without having to just post a video. So like yesterday, I had to put up that little video explaining what happened with the live stream. Instead, in the future... Little information like that will be dropped into Discord, so I can talk to you guys there as well. Well, that's all I got for today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.